let's record this here show. Whoops, I gotta literally do that. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. Thanks everybody for being here. Uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the following program in three, two, one. This is Mrs. Adams. Well, Mrs. Adams, we've been admiring your new home. Well, it's not so new. In fact, it's it's over 30 years old. However, we did have new sidewalls put on about 10 years ago. Tell us, Mrs. Adams, what has been your experience with these asbestos cement sidewalls? You can't even hurt a fish. The Morning Stream. Get the baby! Good morning and welcome to TMS. This is the morning stream for Monday, October 16th, 2023. I'm Scott. That's Brian. Hello, Scott. Welcome to another week. Yeah, baby. Woo! It's the beginning of the week as we know it. Yep. And I feel fine. I actually do feel fine. I feel pretty good today. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. How, are you, how are you feeling? Are you feeling all right? You got a good weekend behind you? Did you feel like it was a productive time, a good time? I... I had a weekend, Scott. Yeah. Um, do you yeah. want me to get into it? Should I get into it? Yeah, really get quick? into it. Get right into it. Dive in like you're swimming I, or whatever. I currently, I currently have no soul, Scott. Oh I, shit! I have no soul. I have no soul. Oh no! You we got to We got to all gather together and give Brian a soul back. How do we do this? Yeah, exactly. Well, um, on Friday, uh, Tristan's roommates were borrowing his car to go to work, and they got into a little bit of an accident. Enough of an accident that the Airbags deployed, but not enough of an accident that anyone's hurt. They're a little sore still from the um, from the stop. It was his girlfriend and their other roommate, and so you know it used to be timing wise, Tristan could take them to work, be home, and then you know and then go to his job, sure. and it worked out time wise. But now they're kind of on a, a way different schedule, so they just borrow his car and go to work, and then he. Um, uh, on the days that he does have to work, he just goes with them, obviously. Makes sense. But yeah. um, they got into a little bit of an accident, enough enough of an accident that the car had to be towed away. Okay, and didn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't drive away insurance. under its own steam or whatever they say. Could not, yeah, it was okay. not able to do that. Enough crumplage in the front, uh, front left of the vehicle, basically. Um, she rear-ended the car uh, in front of her and, and uh, very minimal damage to the car in front of her, but the front of... Uh, Tristan's car is pretty smashed. Uh, so it, we're waiting to hear what the insurance adjuster says and all that. But fortunately, again, everybody's okay. Um, but uh, like the good dad I am, sucker, <laughs> mm. I, uh, I'm letting him borrow my car. and uh, Which means that, that uh, A, I'm just trapped here in the house mm. uh, unless Tina's home and I can use her car. But it also means uh, no lift stories for a few days, at mm. least until... Yeah. Until uh, things come back, so it's a really good time for me to uh, to work on that uh, the, the streaming <laughs> stuff. Like the um, I have two last Iron Man pieces I'm going to put together on stream, and uh, nice. and another part of the Millennium Falcon should be showing up this week. Yep. So and all salads from here on out. That's all you're going to get. Uh, well, yeah, and I've been I've been trying to do well with that too because uh, lately, uh, you know, the, you know, we've been going out to dinner a lot and. Uh, Oh my God! We went to a boiling bag place, like this Cajun. Oh, you know, it's almost like a, you know, it's one of those places where that you get boiled seafood and potatoes and sausage, like a, like a boil. Yeah, I mean, that sounds you know, amazing, boil. like a crab boil. And um, yeah, and you just basically say, all right, uh, what do you want in your bag? I'm like, all right, I want half a pound of clams. I want half a pound of uh, black mussels, um, half a pound of shrimp heads off, and one cluster of Dungeness crab mm. and then they bring it to you. They dump it in. It's all saucy and awesome. The, the, I don't know, you know, what happens to corn on the cob pieces in there, but they, <laughs> they turn into like, like mush, but yeah, uh, they don't always come out right. Those things I've noticed. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever had a crab boil. that was always with corn, like down South yeah. with Kim's family yeah. and stuff. Not sure the corn was ever good. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's so saturated with the sauces and stuff that it's like, it does. They're not big, uh, 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 puffy kernels. They're like yeah. shriveled up, absorbed all the sauce flavor packets. But um, it feels yeah. like something you found on the side of the road after a rainstorm. <laughs> a 
little bit yeah. flavor, little corn cob, little corn kernel flavor packets that uh, just love to wedge between your teeth. Yeah, I feel like maybe there's some. There's a there's probably a taste for that for somebody, but it ain't me. I don't think I'm yeah, not a fan. Yeah, I'll do it. But, that said, yeah. though, oh my god, great meal. But still, you know, you you do you do enough uh, going out to eat meals like that. And it's like, all right, I need to my my lunches will be salads, especially with two trivia nights this week. We oh wow, a Monday night and a Tuesday night trivia this yeah, week. Yeah, you're stacked yeah. up for that. Holy crap. I am. Um, yep. And okay. that's always eating out because it's food trucks at both. Like, of course. Uh, yeah. Plus, you get so you got to do some mind exercises today and tomorrow. You know, get I do. Yes, I I uh, randomly think of uh, um, uh, sport stadiums. Uh, think of uh, uh, best actor nominees. Yeah. I think of uh, yeah. You can kind of actually. This is a great question. Can you sort of pr- have any way no. of predicting? You uh, really no. can't, can you? No. The only thing you can do. I mean, keeping up with current events because you know sometimes these places do a current events around, but. The only training you can do is that loosen your mind recall training because it's like that, um, uh, kind of like that. If you're really struggling to remember something, and we do it all the time here on the show. Oh, yeah. And then as soon as we start thinking of something else, our brain relaxes on whatever we were trying to remember and it comes to us instantly. Yeah, it's isn't like, that weird? Oh, so that weird. guy, that guy, who's that guy's name? Uh, anyway, uh, but I was on the street the other day. Oh, yeah, Vincent Schiavelli or Schiavelli, <laughs> however it's pronounced. Whoa, I didn't expect that's a, him to come out of nowhere. That's a no, good well, one. that's a name that I was desperately trying to remember the other day because I saw a guy who looked like Vincent. Schiavelli yeah, or Schiavelli. Yeah, yeah. Never really did figure out how to pronounce. And yeah. that's a very recognizable dude. Like if you say, Oh yeah, that guy looks like Vincent Schiavelli, somebody's gonna say, Oh, wow, okay. Well, I can completely visualize what that dude looks like. That's great. And uh I was desperately trying to remember that guy's name, and then I thought of something else and it came to me. So that's why that one was a recent, <laughs> recent <moment. laughs> Well, that'll be fun though. You'll have a good time, you'll have no car. Yeah, it'll be it'll fun be to great. do some trivia and yeah. Drive a Tina, exactly. take her car, you know. Well, you yeah, have to. Whatever you got to do. Uh, well, all right. Sorry to. I'm, I'm glad they're okay, though. That's. Um, I meant to say that earlier. That, in this exactly. Discussion. Yeah. That's yeah. the. That is the, the. The key thing. The key takeaway. The important deal. Yes. Uh, my wife wanted me to share some. Uh, some thanks to people collectively. We've tried to do it individually. We're gonna. You know, she's always wanted to send out thank you cards and all that. But the funeral happened on Friday. Uh, it was nice to get some closure. Uh, by the way, I da- I dare any of you to ever have a eulogy where the word. The words "reduced libido" get said over a pulpit. Oh, jeez, um, really? Yeah, I'm not going to tell. Whom? I'm not going to tell that whole story here, but I will tell Brian off air because Brian okay. will laugh at this and keep it to himself. Uh, but for the rest of you, just just know that if you ever have on your on your bingo card <laughs> "reduced right. libido" at a funeral yeah. during a eulogy, well. Uh, I think the chances are low you'll ever hear that, and you would have if you'd have come to the funeral on Friday. Anyway, I saw reduced libido open for Metallic at the Staples Center years ago. <laughs> they were great. They were great. They were great. Yeah, yeah. They had, ba- some, had some had uh, some sound issues, but uh, they figured them out. <laughs> yeah, and when they almost wrecked their Winnebago on that tour, that that's when things kind of got weird. <laughs> that's right. But anyway, uh, she wanted to thank yeah. everybody for all their kind words, and we got a bunch of flowers, and people sent nice things, and it was all very nice. Uh, it was a it was a good thing for everyone to finally have that day that's what funerals are for you know what i kind of learned a lesson here about funerals funerals are something i don't look forward to no one does no one wants to have anyone die that they care about all those things are terrible but i now get it why humans gather together wearing their nice sunday best sit down and listen to people talk and reminisce and have a life sketch and do all the stuff they do and the video montage on the screen in the back and the photos up on the thing. I know why we do that now. There is a need for people to have that stuff happen and, cl- mm-hmm. and close it out. Uh, when I was younger, I used to think, man, funerals are weird. Why would you want to just spend like three hours feeling like shit? You know, I, I didn't understand it when I was younger. And I've had very few funerals in my life, to be honest. I've probably count yeah. them on one hand. Um, I could count them on one. F- no, I've been to a couple funerals. I guess I could count. Yeah, one hand probably though. Yeah, it's lower. It's it's kind of low. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel bad. I'm sure there are people with many. That many. number is going to pick up for us, Scott. Yeah, oh, I know. Boy, it's only going up from here, dude. But uh, but it was nice. It was a good closurey thing outside of some weird stuff that came out of someone's mouth. But I won't talk about that today. I guess I just did. Uh, moving on. Let's talk about. Uh, oh, we got a we got a phone call about phone jailbreaking. 
Oh, that did, I want to play real quick. A jailbreak phone. Jailbreak <laughs> no, phone? no, they did not. However, uh, it's the most sensible answer I've gotten to the to the discussion we had about jailbreaking, okay. and uh, so here it is. This is why you might still sideload and uh, jailbreak your phone. Hey, Scott, this is Keg Tapper calling for the morning stream yesterday or today's show, actually, uh, you were asking about why sideload onto Apple. Uh, I used to work manual QA uh, on the apps for uh, Food Network, HGTV, that kind, of, uh, that kind of thing, Travel Channel. And we would frequently sideload new build tests onto the phone. So that was the reason why we did it. Uh, we did that for all the connected TV apps and that type of thing. And so it was very useful for us. Interesting. So yeah, totally makes sense. As yeah, a developers, 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 developers. It makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't. It makes. I mean, doesn't it seem like you would have if you're a dev of a, you're part of a dev team that makes apps. Mm -hmm. I thought I. I would assume that the tools allowed you to do this sort of thing anyway. I would think so. Yeah. It's weird like that you have use to use test flight and yeah. You, Even uh, if you use I, yeah, that's a good point. Even if you just use test flight for it, yeah. that's the whole point of test flight. Right, right. So I don't know. I don't know why you'd have to. Maybe now. Maybe we've asked more questions. We haven't really answered anything. I guess. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That's what happens here on this show. We don't answer shit. <laughs> you know what's in my test flight? A bunch of those card crawl games that those guys keep putting out oh, yeah. that I play once and forget to play more <laughs> to give them feedback on. So, yeah. uh, card crawl. If you're listening, sorry. I'm you, sorry. You're just as good a beta tester as I am. I'm a terrible beta <laughs> tester. People give me beta access to games all the time desktop stuff yeah. whatever and i'm like yeah but early I, all right let's go and then i play it once and go i'm gonna i'm gonna play this when it comes out for real and not touch it again and never right. provide any feedback <laughs> that's exactly right i do that with, wow oh my god what are everything. we gonna do what are we gonna do friday scott what is our uh uh because we've got both mario and spider-man 2 coming out uh this friday what's what's gonna be your game it's a big it's a big day it is a big um, day, especially for a guy who's a fan, a massive fan of Spider-Man and Mario. Well, the re the reviews are already in. Spider-Man Two, uh, getting getting pretty much mostly positive reviews. A couple of middling, cool. but mostly positive reviews, saying it really ups the game and it's awesome and blah blah blah. Uh, no reviews yet for Mario Wonder. However, my mood right now is probably Spider-Man. I mm -hmm. think. That's where my head's yeah. at. I'm kind of open worldy at the moment, and I think I want that. I think I'm in exactly the same boat, especially because if I turn on my Switch and uh, and and I've already purchased. Basically, I did that thing where you pre-buy two games, you get two game yeah. tokens for brand new games. Right. So I use the first one on Zelda, and I'm using the second one on Mario. Yeah. Um. I feel like if I turn on my Switch and play Mario. I'm I'm cheating on Zelda. I'm cheating oh. on that last boss fight in Zelda. That I need to. Yeah. I, need to get, I felt uh, like that with Breath of the Wild for a long time. Yeah. Where I would play other stuff and go, oh, I'm sorry. Moved I'm your sorry. little. I moved your little icon over to the right. A little bit. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, I understand that feeling. Uh, guess what, guys? Oh, we're gonna play our own game here on the show. Uh, Stephanie, don't worry. Those aren't apps. Let me do a real quick thing though. Oh yeah. Go uh, two, ahead. Two things. Uh, because I just talked about the soul. Um. Got a request from a uh, listener uh, who asked me to 3D print an IKEA chair. I texted you photos if you want to share those photos. Oh, on, uh, absolutely, on I do. Stream. Yeah. Oh, I sorry, I, I read the notes wrong. I was thinking, I, I didn't mean to skip over your chair and the other thing. Oh, the I know. I know because uh, because you saw the soul and thought, oh, he's already done talking yeah, I'm about an idiot. The things. No, no, it's quite right. Let's see. I'm pulling up messages. Here we go. I love it when we can share images. Except too, all you so. listening audience will try to explain this over the air. Okay, okay, oh, here it yeah, is. Yeah, I'll share. I'll share photos on uh, all the Insta. Oh, the Insta. the Insta. Yeah, put it on Insta, Brian. Put it on Insta. I'll put That's it on great. the Insta. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's a, a little three D printed Poang chair. Oh, this isn't um, a full size that, chair. No, that is uh, <laughs> that is about uh, two and a half inches tall. Right there. I'm blown away three, that that. Four, I mean, four, my four, brain went. Oh, tall. that's a chair. Okay, That's, Brian made a chair, and it looks like a full-size chair you could sit your ass on. <laughs> All right, anyway, explain this. Yep. this is awesome. What's so, this for? Uh, it's the chair that uh, Bree's husband plops into at the end of his day of work and just loves that chair. He pops in there, like, just blop, <laughs> flops in that chair. So uh, uh, she asked me to 3D print one for him and paint it, and uh, so I actually did the paint job to make it look like that 
that light pine mm -hmm. even gave it little striations to make it look like wood and then um and then did some stuff with a uh, uh, dry brush to make the cushion look like a real a real uh, cushion this is great <laughs> i love this this is so this is so um how do i put this this makes me want you to make like a whole uh miniature like house full of yeah, miniature I, shit in it you know what i mean i could and it's funny because the the, the person because she downloaded the um the, the stl for this and sent it to me yeah uh, so which i can do by the way oh yeah look at this uh look at this organ ooh, 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 look at the organ craft rumble oh ooh. shit that guy looks like someone who could turn into a man and then back into a wolf. Exactly. So yeah. So if you uh, if you people want stuff commission printed, let me know. Email me. But yeah. um, but the person that she got this STL from just does STLs of IKEA furniture and has a ton of them. So like you can you can download the Billy bookcase or the Calax shelves or whatever and like Weird. have a whole three D. So it may not even be a three D printed house, Scott. It could be a three D printed <laughs> IKEA store display, like one of those rooms. <laughs> yeah, I was. That's <laughs> funny you bring that up. I was just in IKEA yesterday, marveling oh, really? at these small. Like they have a six. Here's a six hundred square foot apartment, and yeah. um, I walked in there. I was tempted to film a short story that made it <laughs> look like I was in there, you know, but then pull yeah. it out and go, whoa, we're in an Ikea, and I didn't do oh it. Oh, my but. God. You know, it would have yeah. been great because you could have done, like, a little sad narration of you, like, listfully looking at something while you're laying on the bed and then another position, like, looking at their fake computer yeah. uh, with some, like, uh, a piano, you know, mm -hmm. uh, NPR piano music in the background. Yeah, and see? Then, uh, see, you know exactly what I, I was exactly aiming for such things. This yes. is what I wanted. Here's what I really want. When I go to IKEA, they always have these fake TVs in these little fake living rooms. Yeah, yeah. I want to buy the fake TV. They don't sell those. No, but I know. I want you a flat panel online, fake. Sure, can I? Somewhere? Probably Alibaba or something, definitely. right? Yeah, definitely somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, Tina and Tristan K and I did our Christmas cards at IKEA several years ago. We took mugs and a... Um, and a, a tripod and we took our christmas card photos like we were sitting in an ikea <laughs> and then made the christmas card look like a page from the catalog wow so that's so great. we were like the you know cheering with our our coffee and our slippers on our feet up on the table and uh that's amazing yeah i thought uh, i sent you one I, i'm pretty sure i sent you one. you probably one. did and i did I just didn't it's know just, this backstory. It's just been a long time. It's just been a long it's time. It's been a long time. All right. I found a place that does nothing but props. Computer, fake computers, fake candy, yeah. fake whatever. And they've got a whole set of TVs from 22 inches up to 60. <laughs> I think Wait I'm going to get one. Black Friday sales, Scott. You'll be able to get those for pennies on the dollar. I know, right? Let's see. Price range. Uh, I want to go 100 to 200. Let's see what I got here. All right. I can get a 60-inch mountable flat fake screen TV. Oh, they're expensive. 119 bucks. Is that PropsAmerica.com? Yeah. I see BioCow just put a link up in there. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Wow. That's uh, seems pricey. crazy. Yeah. It that's, seems a little high. It's a little high. I think for $100 more, you could get a, one, one that works, like yeah. a real one. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It may not be 4K, but... Uh, but look at all this fake food they've got. Oh, man. Cookies. That's, that's they got a whole there. cereal breakfast for 30 bucks, and it's a fake bowl of cereal full of milk and a spoon fake orange juice shit i love fake stuff like Christmas this cookies for 50 bucks i don't know why i love this kind of thing so much i do though yeah fake stuff love it don't know why yeah except boobs I'm not into that uh all right <laughs> well there you go oh uh how was haunting of venice real quick what was your oh, review yeah. give me a score Boy, i don't know if um a haunting in venice was made so much better by the crap that was just a haunting or the haunting <laughs> but um as the third uh, Hercule Poirot uh, movie, yeah. holy crap, it was good. Tina Fey was excellent. Um, Kelly Riley, who we all love in Yellowstone, and uh, oh yeah, I love she her. was in that Frankie and Grace, and um, she's got she's just got some really like amazing eyes. That Kelly, yeah, Riley. there's her something eyes, a, something about her for sure. Yeah, can't can't look away from those eyes. Yeah. Anyway, the. Um, uh, the movie was great, and I would say it's up there with, um, maybe even uh, maybe even liked it better than Murder on the Orient Express as far as the trilogy so far. I don't know if they're going to make more if this is, if it's three and out for mm. um, Agatha Christie, but uh, yeah, uh, this would be the time they'd either get out or or bear down, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. but no, it was 
I thought it was really good. And it's weird having a, you know, you've got your 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 weird hybrid movies. I just watched a time travel slasher that I'll talk about on Wednesday. Mm. Um, we've had uh, superhero heist movies and, you know, all sorts of different combinations. I don't know if I've ever seen a horror mystery before. Mm. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, Angel Heart could kind of be, can uh, maybe described as a horror mystery. Could but, see uh, that, sure. But uh, this one was just straight up horror mystery, and damn, it's uh, it's way scarier than the first two films, and really, really good though. I'm uh, curious about it. I like the first yeah. one. Didn't see the second one because everyone said it was bad, and so I avoided it. Yeah, um, great cast, great cast on all three of these. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know why the second one just fell flat. Well, that probably means it's like the Ocean's movies, right? Twelve sucked. Yeah. So you got you got eleven. You know. great. Or twelve. Sorry, twelve. No, wait. Yeah, Ocean's, Ocean's 11 is great. The, Sorry. 11's good. 12's 12 yeah. sucks. What's the number before 12? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean there's you know there's a few trilogies. If you just look at the initial Indiana Jones trilogy, the lesser of the 3 yeah is the is the middle one. I don't think it's I think you and I both agree it's not nearly as bad as um uh as, Crystal as Skull. Oh might hell say. no. Yeah. But, I'll uh, take 2. I like 2, but I but I'm not going to sit there and argue it over either of the other two yeah movies yeah. um but yeah like well, Dr. Uh, calhoun star trek movies are exact opposite two is great and one and three are kind of yeah uh, the evens the evens in star trek are the winners yeah the odds yeah. in and the evens in uh star wars are often the winners too yeah right although one's great yeah. but two you know or well empire, it, everybody loves empire empire's though, great so everybody how do you not like empire i mean my gosh who are who are the people that don't like Empire Strikes exactly, Back? Exactly, exactly. I don't want to know. I don't want to know those people. I don't want to know them. Yes. Um, all right. Anyway, so good review for Hunting in Venice. All right. Thumbs up from Brian. Both of them, right? Both thumbs. That's right. Okay. Both, both thumbs up. All right. That's better up than up in down. the air. Like I just don't care. Yeah. That's the. Those are the ones. Let's see here. Who are we calling? Dunaway. That's who. Let me add him to the thing. We missed him last week. Let us let us uh, rectify that mistake and bring him back in. <laughs> for uh, today's fun time. Uh, here's his deal. Uh, that music signifies the entrance of Brian Dunaway, who we didn't have last Monday and Wednesday, which made us all sad. Uh, it did. You know, it did. Randy would be fine. Don't get me wrong. Randy yeah, was a fine was a, replacement. Randy was a fine Randy, but he's yeah. no Brian Dunaway. He's no, he's no Dunaway. Dunaway's the regular. Dunaway, what are you doing? How are you? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Uh, let me see. Enjoying the first truly feels like fall day oh. where I live. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, well, you know, I've had like little kisses here and there. It's like, oh, that cold wind. Mm. But no, this morning it was like, I need to get a jacket. Yeah. It's cold. We're having Weather that today. Weather foreplay period is over and now it's moved on. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Is with the, the, the kissing of my neck is over. It is uh, cold hands down my pants. That's what See, that was going to say. And now you're in the same boat with how do I finish this <laughs> analogy? That's right. <laughs> it's a hard one to get to the end of. By the way, 56 here, currently in Salt Lake City. It will be a high of 75 today. It'll be very nice. Uh, Brian, what are we looking at in the uh, the metro uh, Denver 54 area? 54 currently, 71. All right. I have so, 71 today in Arvada. All right. We're all in the zone today. Yeah. And then you and I will enjoy it without. We'll get without, into the zone. Without 400 pounds of moisture hanging all over the place, like Brian will, and that's fine. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes. Dunaway, speaking of your moisture, bring it, bring it to bear here in our contest uh, that we do on Mondays called the Half Asses. Uh, Brian Ibbett here will explain it and tell us who we're playing for. Brian, take it away. Sure. Welcome to the morning Half Asses, a trivia game where I'm actually going to be giving you the answers. I'm going to give Scott and Brian a category and six possible answers, three of which are correct, three that are incorrect. However confident you feel with the category, you can provide one, two, or three guesses. But if any of those guesses are wrong, you get zero points for that round. Get one right gets you a point. Guess two right gets you three points. And get all three correct, you will get five points for that round. The player with the most points after three rounds wins the prize of their contestant. Hey, here's who you guys are playing for. Scott, you're playing for Amber Elstad in Portland, Oregon. Mm. 
Brian, you're playing for Kevin Moody in Brighton, Tennessee. Ooh. Oh, Mr. Moody. Mr. Okay. Moody. We're keeping it in the south over there and keeping it in the west over here. This is great. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just weird how it's You got to keep them like separated. That. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, let's get to it here. Uh, your first question and your six possible answers. Let's go baseball because we all know a lot about baseball. Oh, yeah. God. So I like, let's get this one. All over I know first. about baseball is the gum is terrible. Yeah. That's, that's so true. It's true. Uh, well, you just watch Bull Durham. Maybe that'll help you with this. Um, major leaguers mm. who pitched more than two no hitters. Which of these pitchers uh, pitched more than two no hitters? You've got Christy Mathewson. You've got Nolan Ryan. Ray, I'm sorry, Roy, no, Ray, Roy, Roy Halliday. Ray, <laughs> Ray, Roy, 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 Ray. Ray. You call me Ray J. You can call me. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh Randy God. Johnson, Sandy Koufax. <laughs> I don't and get it. Bob Feller. <laughs> Which three of these pitched no, more than two no hitters? That's Bob Feller. Feels like a long time ago, that guy. Um, I'm doing two. Okay. Because I Thank don't. God I watched Bull Durham recently because that totally informed everything I chose today. That's right. I'm sure it did. Good. Is is a good good practice for this. Putting on the old glasses. Mm -hmm. Um holy mackerel. Uh all right, you guys both settled you in. You missed them all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nolan Ryan is a very good choice because he pitched twenty one no hit I'm sorry, seventy one no hitters. Seventy one wow. no hitters pitched I didn't by know Nolan that Ryan. High. So mm -hmm. he was a very good choice. Uh, another good choice is Sandy Koufax. Yeah. Oh, really? Who pitched four Man. no hitters. Uh, really? The other one is Bob Feller, who pitched three. Good job. Randy Johnson, the big unit who's known for his strikeouts, has only pitched one no hitter as of the uh, the writing of this game. So 2020, I believe this game came out. Mm. I haven't checked to see if he's uh, uh, done anymore, or even if he's still playing baseball. Christy Mathewson, uh, two. And Roy Halliday won. So nice. Congratulations. Scott, Good job, going Scott. Into round two. I met Scott, Nolan Ryan once a long Scott time ago. Scott knows the balls. I met Nolan Ryan a long time ago, probably 90, early 90s. Nicest. Really? Yeah, I came. Wow. We went to a, some that was, speech. That he did. was the best time to meet him. He did like a talk mm -hmm. somewhere. I can't remember why we were even there. None of that's memorable, but he was very nice. Got to shake his hand. Super nice guy. <laughs> I think he's still Is around. It, How did card, it feel? What kind card. of hand was it? Do you remember? It was a big hand. Sorry, yeah. Randy. Was so, it a big hand? Was so it? People are about to. Ahead. People are saying that seventy-one is uh, both incorrect. Is a typo on here. Look, I'm looking at it right now. It says seventy-one, but you guys are telling me just seven, which makes a lot more sense. <laughs> seventy-one no hitters. Um, it, well, but the card says moops. Sorry. Sorry, card, card says, says moops. moops. Yeah. That's the card says moops rule. Just moops. Yeah, yeah. that's what we do rule. here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All Excellent. Right. Um, <laughs> let's get to uh, let's get to clothing, fashion, if you will. I know you guys are big into this, and uh, you both wear hats. I know Scott wears a hat. Brian, do you wear hats ever? Do you, Brian? Do you ne never watch my stream? Do you never? Oh, he's oh, yes, all yeah, hats. That's right. Yeah, you, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's we right. In, yeah, that's. I in, wear uh, a hat every time. He's almost we all hat. I know you weren't wearing a hat though. I can't remember the last. Oh, yeah. That's, I guess no. you guys just saw each other, but I, I can't remember a time where I was either with you or saw you and you weren't wearing a hat. That's very, wow. pretty rare. I yeah. love my hats, man. You do like a hat. Yeah. Yeah. What are you hiding? What are you putting on your head to hide? What is it? <laughs> horns? You got horns? You got some sort of bleeding ulcer does. up there? He has, a, he has a mohawk is what he's hiding. Uh, oh, that's what uh, it is. All right. Which of these are types of headwear? Uh, the Trier, the Lubeck, the Hamburg, the Hamelin, the Rummel, Rummel, or the Trilby. Oh Three Lord. of these are headwear. Three of them are not headwear. I have no idea. Not this. where I live. Yeah. Not where I live. Wow. These sound like all like... Uh, European names for stuff. They sure do. Um, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start here. This is and ridiculous. a couple of them sound like Russian, right? Uh, um, yeah, they do a little. The rumble sounds Russian. Maybe yeah. I'm thinking a ruble. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. If you, but uh, if you also told me this was all IKEA furniture, I would also go okay. I'm going with two again. <laughs> oh, it does it sound like, like IKEA. Going two again. Yeah. Yeah. It does. That's right. funny. Thank you. Everyone I'm keeps bringing with, up Ikea. I'm going to go with two as well. Okay. Right. I'm going to go with two randomly selected <laughs> headwear <laughs> possibilities. Excellent. Uh, you guys are both locked in. Uh, Hamburg, the H-O-M-B-U-R-G. That is a hat. Very good, you guys. Well done. All right. Um, Lübeck. Lübeck is a German town. 
And Tomlin, Tomlin is also a German town, as is Trier. Uh, ah. You've got three German towns and three hats, or three pieces of headwear: the uh, Rumel and the Trilby. What's the Trilby look like? I want to see the Trilby. I'm going to look. The Trilby was the only one I recognized as being headwear. Oh, um, you'd heard of I this before? Tell you oh, I've heard that of looks this like before. a. You know what? I'm What's not surprised like little... to hear that because you. Oh, it's yeah. It's like a. It's like a cowboy hat and a and a fedora a narrow... had had a baby kind of. Yeah, and you know what? My funny hat because it has such a thin brim actually might be a trilby. Oh, interesting. Okay, so look thinner at brim. You. Yeah, look at that. Let me that... tell you who looks good in hats. Let me tell you who looks good in hats. Who? Brian Ibbett looks good in oh, hats. Oh hell yeah, Brian yes. Ibbett looks there. good in hats. Hell yeah, dude. Just can't wear it over my. I, uh, I can wear. I can wear baseball caps. That is the only hat I can wear. Oh, well then. Yeah, that's true. And that's all the hat you ever wear. It's all I ever see you wear. Yeah, yeah. Or a stocking cap. I can wear one of those. Oh, like a beanie like type thing. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, like a beanie. People are into the beanies. People like the beanies. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've seen... That's that's the kind of hat I feel like I've seen Brian in the most is a beanie. True story. Yeah. Yeah. True story. Both of those my two faves. All right. Yep. Well, now right. that we've learned well, Trilby. No points, uh, no points on that one. Let's get to the last one. Um, you guys, I think, will have a lot better time with this because you're, oh, both, from, you're both from the <laughs> United States. So this is good. U- United States question. Sure. Um, which of these are U.S. national parks? Uh, Isle Royale, Great Sand Dunes, White Mountains, Mauna Kea, Shenandoah, Niagara Falls, Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea. Yeah. One of these feels a, like a, a trick question. Not a do, Mona do, do, Ikea. Do, 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 do. I think I like Mauna Kia. I think I like. Uh, I locked I in like, with two. I did two I, I as I well. I look forward to losing. I did okay. two as well. well All right. You'll oh never gosh, win with two, just... but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you guys both locked in on the Great Sand Dunes. That is right here in Colorado, and it is a national yeah. park, and it's a lot of fun. I knew you that can, one. Uh, yeah, you, you can, can go, snowboard. Oh yeah, take gonna, a snowboard. Yeah. You can snowboard down the Great Sand Dunes. Can it's you crazy. do that? Can you do four wheeler stuff? Or are they not allow that there? Or what's the I deal? I don't know if they allow that there. Mm. They might not. Yeah, it national might only be national park may not be allowed to do that. Motorless uh, stuff. Um, the other uh, two are uh, Isle Shannon Royale. Uh, Isle Royale. Right. Where's that? Isla, I don't know where Isle Royale is, uh, or the Isle Royale with cheese, and Shenandoah. <laughs> well, I knew it. Shenandoah, which crap. means Brian. Yeah, Brian yeah. also gets two. It's in the song. What? It's in the song. We've touched Shenandoah to the Blue Ridge Mountain. What's how the song go? I knew it was some uh, some uh, places. Yeah. Shenandoah, no Blue Ridge Mountains, Colorado. No, I don't know how. Blue Ridge Mountains, Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, something like that. Is uh, from Shenandoah, West Virginia. Virginia. This land was made for, for you and you me. And me. <laughs> don't think they say Shenandoah in that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other three, by the way, White Mountains are a national forest. Niagara Falls is a national heritage area, and uh, Mauna Kea Kia is a U.S. national landmark, not a park. And that's oh. in uh, Hawaii. Is that in the Hawaiian Islands somewhere? That is, that is in the Hawaiian Islands. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which means, my friends, we have a tie game. We and do. When we have a tie. I pull out a tiebreaker question. Zoop, right here in my hands is the tiebreaker question. Um, let's give uh, Scott the first one on this one. All right. Um, through the Simpsons' first 400 episodes, mm. how many jobs did Homer have or mention having? So oh, we all know Homer's had a lot of jobs. Yeah. He was a. He was a mascot for the uh, the isotopes. Hey, don't you don't tell him all the jobs. <laughs> well, okay, so now he knows it's more than one. Yeah, I do know it's more than God. one. Um, <laughs> oh my and God! And you said I should have looked at question number two on this thing because it's more per, it's more perfect for us. But oh, well, uh, we'll use that one. Use that one. Well, I mean, oh. it's fine. So you say the first four hundred episodes? You say through the first four hundred episodes, how many jobs did Homer have or mention having having? Um, yeah, a little bit happening. The happening. Happening. The happening. I'm gonna can't say. Wait to watch that on film sack. Oh yeah, I can't wait. Uh, twenty. Uh, twenty jobs. I'll say. Okay. Twenty oh. is incorrect. Brian, is the actual answer higher or lower than twenty? I mean, there's 400 episodes. I mean, at least a third of those is probably mentioned some kind of job. Mm. I would say definitely higher. It is definitely higher. Damn 188 it. different jobs, including astronaut, fortune cookie writer, marriage counselor, and opera singer. Dude, this game, mm-hmm. I was so confident going into the final round. I was ready to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, I freaking lost it. I am so sorry to our friend in Oregon, to Amber. 
uh, for losing our terrible loss here. It's all right. She's still going to walk away with the prize. By the way, the other question I could have asked you guys, how many ingredients are in a McRib sandwich? Oh, um, man, that would have been great. I um, know, because... Uh, I mean, we could do it for fun. You want to do it for yeah, fun? Yeah, do, do it for fun. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done yeah. away, what do you uh, say? How, how many? Well, there's there's a bun, there's a pickle, there's onions, there's the Merrick rib, and then there's the sauce. That's at least five right there. Now you say ingredients. Do you mean breaking it down to like flour and the bread and everything else? I'm yes. not sure, but I'm yes, going to say. I need oh, you yes. do? Okay. Yes. In that case, multiply it times four. So let's probably say about 25 or so. I'm going to okay. say higher. Uh, the actual answer is higher. It's 70 ingredients in a McRib mm. sandwich. Nice. Wow. 70. Holy shit. Yes, the McRib was born in 1981 as a substitute for McNuggets, which kept which kept selling out. So basically, it's like uh, people keep wanting the McNuggets. What do we do? I know we'll come up with something that's completely not chicken as a replacement. Well, I mean, the chicken would be a problem. So I guess they went with a different type of meat. Is it a different type of meat? I don't it is. Even know. It's pork. Supposedly, it's pork. Okay. Yeah, supposedly. Well, I mean, it's pork. It's by you, said it, you said it's. You said like you knew. I'm it's like, pork. It's pork like. <laughs> it's porkish. Yeah, porkish. That's porkish. the way you put it. I'm feeling a bit porkish today. That's funny. <laughs> uh, well, I'm 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 happy that we have winners today. That's that's good yes, news. So sure. congratulations, Kevin Moody in Brighton, Tennessee, and Amber Estad in uh, Portland. That's right. Oh yeah, Kevin, you're getting a copy of Flynn, Son of Crimson, and Pilgrims. And uh, Amber, you're getting a copy of Stick Fight. So nice. fight those sticks. Ooh, yeah. That's a good one. Stick that's Fight's good actually one. pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's better than you think. It's it's Stick Men, but it's it's a cool game. Cool. Uh, very cool. Hey, Dunaway, nice job. Uh, real quick here. This oh, is just cute. a reminder. We're not even to Wednesday yet. We'll we'll tell people again about it. But on Friday, uh, we will be doing our show uh, play retro this week. You've mm-hmm. got a birthday thing on Wednesday, and we want to make a wide berth that's for right. that. So we're going to record Aww. on Friday, two thirty Mountain Time. Uh, that'll be well after uh, we finish up our couch party and all that stuff. So uh, uh, be, be here for that. What are you gonna be? What are you gonna be talking about? Do you know yet? Or uh... Uh, we do. It is going to be Brian. I'm, remind me, shit. I'm right. I I am hoping it will be horror arcade shooters. Oh right, light gun um, horror uh, arcade yeah. shooters. That's right. Arcade horror yeah. arcade <laughs> shooters. Like I guess uh, si- uh, Splatterhouse is a side scroller, not a shooter, right? Right, Correct. right, right, right. right. C- um, Correct. So um, we got like uh, t- Chiller, Crypt Killer, uh, House of the you, Dead, you know, the House of the Dead, dead in there. Yes, yeah. there you go. Uh, yep, what else? Yep. You could probably count that Terminator game in there. It's pretty scary. Yeah, it's a little oh, sci-fi. So yeah, like I, I actually, Area 51, I actually ordered that kind of thing. Of yeah. yeah, Area Fifty One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you get, right. Yep. You get the big I ordered, rifles. Um, Right. I ordered a sensor bar for my computer so I can use my Wiimote so that I can use my little gun Wiimote thing for shooting. I'm going to see how it works out. Nice. You're a giant nerd for doing that. (laughs) I am a nerd. I like it. Thank you. I like it. I'm impressed. Dunaway, kiss our butts. We'll see you next time. No, you. (laughs) That was a good good no you. I like that. It was. Uh, well done, everybody, uh, especially Brian, and uh, congrats to our winners. Let's move on to, oh, we've got time. You know what? We'll do one news story. One. Okay. Can't believe we have time. Here you go. Enjoy. <laughs> Brian, it's the news brought to you by Funeral Potatoes. Literal potatoes. Funeral Potatoes. We had them on Friday. Literal Literally. Funeral yes. Potatoes. Yeah. And they're yeah. great, by the way. I don't want to, this is not a besmirchment of Funeral Potatoes. Uh, in the right hands, clearly these were done. They had a lovely dinner after the thing, and you these potatoes hands? were so good. Oh my gosh! I'm sure that if I'd eaten another spoonful, I'd have gained five pounds. But they were so <laughs> good. So, so whoever sure. that whoever yeah. that old lady, there was an old lady who made them. Whoever you are, you're awesome. <laughs> um, all right, quick news story here. We got an Amish man in the news. Amish man is in the news. Amish man. What's his power, Brian? What's his, what's he do? Able to withstand getting piles of corn dumped on him in a silo, but the people chasing him won't be so lucky. Excelsior! <laughs> yeah, specifically, um, that's Amish boy, really. It's yeah, a, <laughs> Amish lad. Amish lad. <laughs> but what? Who's the the, the guy that got killed in that corn thing? Was uh, was, uh, 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 fr- uh from from uh from the Lethal Weapon movies? Yeah, uh, it's Danny Glover. Danny yes. Glover chasing after Lucas Haas. That's right. Hell of a that movie's still good, still holds up. Yes, witness me. Pretty much all Peter Weir movies hold up. I don't care which yeah. one it is. Yeah, that guy made right. movies to last a, a lifetime. 
Anyway, Amish men or men, actual men, a collected mm. collection of men, have been shunned oh. after a nationwide emergency alert outs them for having phones. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so that, that alert that we got last week, yeah. the 1220 uh, yep. test. Yep. yep, that horrible test that thankfully didn't happen during any live shows, um, but still scared the shit out of me when it happened. Oh, absolutely. It made me poop my pants. I yeah. wasn't ready for it. Uh, anyway, this is... buying a pair of basketball shorts. <laughs> this is really great. Uh, members of the Amish community have been shunned by their church after the recent test of an emergency alert uh, system outed them as having pro uh, procured forbidden mobile phones. The alarms, part of the nationwide emergency alert drill that the U.S. government carried out on the 4th of October, drew the attention of the community elders in Ohio. Eli Yoder. Yoder. <laughs> Yoder. Yoder's an I knew awesome a Yoder. name. Did you know a Yoder? I knew, a, I knew a, a couple Yoders, a husband and wife named Yoder. I and know. Was, his name was Ted. Ted and, Ted and Mary Beth Yoder. In high school, people, my one of my nicknames was Yoder, and I don't know why. Really? Like, dude, they go, yo, Yoder. <laughs> Yoder. I don't know why. That was a thing. Huh. Former right. member of the Amish community took to TikTok to share the story in which he explained how three of his old friends got into trouble after their devices were discovered. Hey, guess what? He says, I just got a couple of my Amish buddies shunned today by the Amish church. That's right. He said, over the three years, there have been quite a few Amish men. I'll do it in his voice. It says, Amish men that reached out and wanted phones. So wherever they go milking, 4.30, time for milking. Uh, they request to have a phone. I'll do everything I can to get them a phone. Not always can I do so. But in some circumstances, I have been able to get them a phone. He still talks like an people, Amish guy. People come to me when they want something. I can get them a phone. I can get them a rock hammer. That was the last time I saw Hebediah. <laughs> um, I'd like to tell you that... Uh, <laughs> The emergency alert didn't go off in their pockets, but but I can. <laughs> he milked 500 cows and came out clean on the other side. <laughs> anyway, that's a fun story to start you with and end you with today on our news. I'm glad we were able to report the news so that you all had could be informed for yes. the rest of your day. Good, nice brief news. I like a good brief news. news I do brief. too. That's a news brief. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of uh, uh, briefs, no, I don't know about that. Uh, Science with Bobby coming up right after this uh, break, the song break, and Bobby will be here to talk about some sort of science topic as he is a science podcaster, all right? Yeah. Uh, so sip still, get ready for that. Hey, Brian, what's the song break uh, deal today? What are we well, doing? Well, I've got a, a band, a uh, brand new band, but they've got a nice little pedigree in their producer, uh, a guy named Mudrock who worked with Avenged Sevenfold, Linkin Park, Godsmack, and Deftones, so you know it's got to be good. Mm. This is a new band called Stray and the Wild. Um, kind of dark alternative, um, think um, along the lines of like Evanescence, but with a, 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 a maybe a, a lower register lead vocalist. Anyway, sure. if you like uh, Nirvana, Metallica, Muse, Run DMC, Chili Peppers, I mean, oh no, I take that back. That's who mastered it, Howie Weidenberg, who, uh, who mastered Nirvana, Metallica, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Muse, and Run DMC. Uh, I wish I could master just one of those bands, but they're all too difficult. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Maybe if I do it on, do one of them on easy mode. Anyway, uh, this is Stray in the Wild and the brand new song, Show Me the Way. <laughs> He's saying the frame is intersects with the ramus stand approximately at the Paternoster. <laughs> it's okay to say no, even to an adult. And we've returned. Tell me who that was again. Sure. That's the band Stray and the Wild. Brand new single, Show Me the Way. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, make way for Bobby. <laughs> he's yes. coming in hot. He's, uh, you know, he's, he, this look out. Oh, this thing always reminds me we have multiple rooms with him. And so I should use one of the others. But I'm like, no, I want him in this call. Okay. Exactly. This call. But you could use this other room with Bobby. Forget it. Use this other room with Bobby. Science. Bob is hungry, and the soup looks good. Yeah, it does. Captain Bobby Frankenberger joining us right now, all the way from South Carolina. Right. We were just talking to someone from there. Bobby, welcome back to the show. How are you? 
I'm doing great. Oh, Two you South sound like Carolinians you got a cold. In one episode. You sound like oh, a. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what do you got there? Yeah. Some kind of southern cold. Uh, uh, the croup. The croup. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? I had. It was weird. Um, my my co-host Mora came and visited us from Canada, and um, and she the day she came, my voice just disappeared. No other symptoms. Yeah. But j- my voice just disappeared. Went away. I was paranoid I was going to get her sick, so I was like tech checking my temperature, all this kind of stuff. And uh, while she was here, my voice just disappeared over the course of an hour. I had no idea why. Wow. I was whispering for like a whole day because of it. Um, and then in the subsequent days, it's come back. But then I've gotten like, like sinus congestion and like runny nose and a cough and sore throat. Like the, I feel like the symptoms came in the reverse order. You know, mm, I've never had yeah. it happen that way first. Yeah, usually right. You start off with uh, the runny nose and the sore throat and that's like the, that's like your early warning system saying, hey, got a cold coming on. Yeah. Everybody get ready. Yeah, get ready for this. Yeah, well, yeah and then I know to take it easy on my voice. Mm. You know? Did you do that? Did you take a, did you take some time with your voice or are you, uh, are you violating that oath now by talking to us? Like, well, I already lost the voice once. I feel like uh, I'll be fine. Like, yeah, sure. Know. Yeah, you'll be all right. <clears throat> it's coming back. Oh, good. So it's fine. Thank the Lord on high. Well, uh, that's good news. <laughs> We're gonna uh, enjoy our time with you today because you've brought yeah. some sort of scientific study substance thing deal topic. I do. I I, ha- I want to talk about asteroid samples, but I you t- talked about emergency alerts, and it made me think. I wanted to ask you guys a question. Do you think I would like to see numbers? I wonder how many people got into car accident. Like if the car accident oh, rate geez. went up in that moment, oh. you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Is there because, a way? To, yeah. Because when it happened for me, I was driving and I was in the middle of going through an intersection. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And yeah. then it happened, and I imme- I like was sure somebody's going to hit me. Weird. <laughs> like somebody's right. going to get distracted and hit me. Because you might think it's somebody honking that they're about to hit you. It's the sound. It's really close to the sound in movies and TV shows when you're watching the driver and you see the car coming from their their side yeah. view window right at them. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. I I didn't think so. about that. Like I was sitting here working. Working, and it mm-hmm. it's it freaked me out to the point of i think i typed a bunch of gibberish because my hands jerked and you like <laughs> your hands flew forward onto the keyboard yeah something like that happened and then um i think my wife may that may have happened while she was in her car i can't remember where she was yeah. she might have been traveling still i can't remember but but anyway yeah that'd be interesting to know right were there yeah. a bunch of people yeah. caught unaware like, in their cars and did it cause yeah, or, or, like like yeah. I said, I was in a Coles buying basketball shorts, and when that went off, I almost bought a medium. <laughs> <laughs> or well, you can't have or, that. Or was anybody like in the middle of like brain surgery? And <laughs> I hope you don't have your phone on you when you're when you're doing. Uh, well, the the, the Amish it wasn't supposed to have a phone either. Oh, no, good yeah, point. Yeah, 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 the, um, Steph- the Amish. My wife Stephanie, she's in the pharmacy. They have like a no phone policy in the pharmacy, and everybody's phones went off during that. And she just put her hands on her hips and looked at everybody and was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Do they? St- oh, that. oh, that's awesome. Do they still call yeah. us the English? Is that a thing? The Amish refer to all non Amish." No. First, yeah. yes, no. The Coles uh, checkout lady at Coles. I want to know what she calls it. But like you know, when in they, the, in the movies, when they open the pharmacy, they that's how they open it. They yell, "The British are coming," because they because they always call John Book in, the English, and the then English, and yeah. I didn't know if that was real or not because I've never really been to an Amish community or known an Amish mm-hmm. person. So do they? Am I the English? If they see me, they go, "Oh, English," or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. maybe. Well, anyway, uh, maybe that study will come out later. Who knows? It almost is a great. It's a great concept for a horror movie where yeah. all ele- mm-hmm. let's say it's all electronic devices all make a horrible screeching sound all at the same time and nobody was prepared for it. Planes will go down. Yeah, that um, like an of like a post apocalyptic movie. Yeah. Everybody crashed everything right. all at once. Right, exactly. Yeah. I love that what kind of stuff. Co- I could tell you what caused the apocalypse. It was everybody was <laughs> testing of the emergency alert system. And- uh, yeah. <laughs> it is basically the plot of Stephen King's cell. C E L L. It kind of is. Yeah. yeah. Right. I love that book, but it's so dependent on 90s handsets. It's just yeah. ridiculously dependent on flip phones. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, All right. Sorry, Bobby. Let's talk about asteroid pieces and where they're where I can find them. Yeah. So um, this was um, some big news in the past couple of weeks. Uh, big been in the big science news is um, that NASA just uh, just started looking at a, a returned sample from the asteroid Bennu. Um, there, was a, there was a mission called OSIRIS-REx, which stands for 
Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, and Security, Regolith Explorer. Wow. So, um, you know. I would. I think it sounds like a Guardians of the Galaxy villain we haven't explored. Osiris yet. Rex. Yeah. yeah, Osiris Rex. Oh, Osiris Rex after Thanos. He's the worst th threat. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the next big bad after King. Yeah, this yeah. time, this one's really bad this time. Wow. Um, <laughs> The uh, so it was on September 24th. So this mission was launched back in 2016, and the idea was they were going to send this this probe, this explorer, out to this asteroid in the asteroid belt yeah. to take a a sample and return it back, a very clean, pristine sample, and return it back to Earth um, so that it could be put in this special clean room that they're designing specifically for this at NASA, so they can get uh, pristine asteroid samples to be able to study. And um, that finally came back. It landed in Utah, by the way. Utah connection. Oh, hey, um, sweet. Love to hear that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then uh, it was on September 24th. It was a billion dollar mission. Wow. Um, and, That's actually uh, kind of low compared hmm. to other mission costs, right? That's For actually... something, yeah, like to get something that far out and have it come back with samples. Mm -hmm. That does seem seems like a good, seem like it's a a good price. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they bought that price. thing on Black Friday, basically. <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad you recognize that because I thought that was um that was not too high either, considering what they were doing. Right. Yeah. The asteroid yeah. belt is further out than Mars, right? Mm. Um, so they were sending something all the way out there. For this always blows my mind when I think about the scope of NASA missions, right? They it's a it's a little asteroid that's like a half a kilometer across or something. Right. <laughs> um, they sent a probe out to it, they orbited it, and then they spent six just six seconds uh, drilling into it and collecting a sample, and then came back. And the fact that they were able to do that is just it blows my mind all the time. Now, um, is no this kidding. the the articles I'm finding on this are all talking about how it's mineral rich? Is that did they target it for this reason? Did they think there was something in there that was like, oh, this thing's full of no. essential? It's all part of a, a a big breakfast or whatever. I don't know what's in that thing. <laughs> it's, it's all part, part of, of a balanced of, breakfast. Yeah, balanced yeah, breakfast. NASA's <laughs> complete breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the reason that they chose the reason that they this the whole mission purpose was to find clues about the early conditions of our solar system. Okay. Um, so four billion years ago, the, the all the planets formed, all the, the rocky stuff in our solar system started forming, and that includes the asteroid in the asteroid belt. Um, so lots of stuff, dust and particles, started to coalesce into large objects, and, and um, the stuff that didn't end up forming into planets and moons... Um, just kind of all the the leftover trash right. rocks got went and f started floating around in this ring between Mars and Jupiter, um, and so the the thought is like on on the planets after all that stuff formed, um, you've got atmospheres, you've got things smashing into it, you've got billions of years of erosion and weathering and all this stuff in in various planets. You can't kind of you can no longer tell what were the conditions when those things formed um also the big planets you know they they're all compressing on each other and so then you have molten rock in the middle all this kind of stuff right mm -hmm. so if you can go out to the asteroids and you can see these were also all formed at the same time as the planets they'll give you some a lot of information about what were things like when all the planets when the solar system was first forming mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. And um, and so that's what they were hoping for. They were also hoping to find clues about um, like where wa they were hoping to find water on the asteroid. <laughs> I thought you were going to say werewolves. I don't know why. I, I, when you said where, what, and then I went, what? He's about to tell us about werewolves. <laughs> I mean, that would be really cool. Yeah, I, mean, I can't yeah. argue with that. Yeah, they came from yeah, space. It turns out weird. That's yeah. that's on the mission parameters, but they weren't hoping for it. It's kind of a long shot. Mm. But um, <laughs> the they were hoping to find water. They were expecting to find water and, and hoping they would because that would ha help give us maybe some clues about where water on Earth came from. That's a big mystery uh, still. An open question in science is how does how's there so much water on Earth? Where did it all come from? Because early in Earth's history, it's very it's just rocky and it's very hot. So even if even if water collected on earth early on they would have expected it would have all just um evaporated and then you know just been pushed out into space with no atmosphere mm. um because i've earth never thought really about that that's crazy hold on a second yeah i've never thought about that like all that water wouldn't have just spontaneously poofed 
right? It doesn't, right. Mm-hmm. water doesn't work that way. H2O doesn't work that way. It would have to be, right. oh, that's wild to think about. Yeah, so there's a lot of different theories about where water came from, but one of the big ones is that um, asteroids and comets hitting Earth might have seeded water right. on Earth. You what know? if it was, gl- hey, Brian, what if it's Galactus P? What if P? <laughs> what if he just? It would be a lot those? more than that. Oh, uh, I see. We'd have a we'd <laughs> have a quantity. Would, yeah. <laughs> it would be water world here. Is what we'd have. It would be exactly yes. It'd be <clears throat> urine world. That's so a good there point. There aren't enough potted plants. Um, <laughs> that's right. To that's the truth. That. That's yeah. really interesting. So so they'll be able to. And this clean room. The whole idea is to have uh, as little as possible contamination of any kind and not even not even traditional contamination like they don't want regular air in there they want they want nothing yeah Yeah, just like let's see this in its most pure form or whatever things like this make me worry sometimes because they'll target the one they want to get the sample from they get the sample they bring it back they land it in utah like they seem to always do for who knows why probably a lot of all that space down there i don't know (laughs) um and then they pull it out and they look at it and i always think what if it's just like dirt? What if it's the same as the dirt in the backyard? You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Like what? Like if it's <laughs> well, just like a piece of dirt. We didn't learn anything from this. <laughs> right, right. That was a dumb billion dollars anyway, you know? It seems... <laughs> well, I mean, if it was dirt like soil from Earth, that would be very exciting because it would be very unexpected to find that on an asteroid, right? Oh, that's so a good anything point. With, yeah. yeah, anything we find is is... It's all information. It's all data right right so that's why it's all very very useful for us to see so the the they sent it up there they were expecting to collect the the goal was to collect 60 grams of of material of loose uh you know pebbles and rocks and everything from this from this asteroid and um it was so successful that they 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 collected 250 grams more than four times what they were hoping to get whoa yeah um so much so that it actually overflowed into the way the canister is designed <laughs> is uh, there's a canister and then there's sort of like a, a, a gap between the canister and then a larger canister that holds the main canister. Mm-hmm. And it, they got so much stuff that it filled up all the, the gap between the two canisters even. So they had a bunch of extra stuff um, that they were able to look at and they were able to do some like preliminary um, testing. They haven't... As far as um, I know, the last time I checked, they haven't actually opened the proper canister yet, even though it's been a couple of weeks, mm. because they're trying to be very close, very oh, careful sure. and slow about it. I see. Right. Um, they've they've shot it shot at it with like X rays and all these other things to to see what's inside and just get a sense of what they're looking at. But but they they were able to do some pre- preliminary looks at all this extra stuff that was collected on the outside, so they already have some information about about what was in there or what is it going to be in there and so they found um they found a bunch of carbon uh, which is good uh five percent carbon by mass and um and they did find an abundant amount of water from hydrated clays that were on this asteroid Mm -hmm. so water and carbon together is a very strong sign that there could so the water is great but also that they could be looking at um, a source of organic compounds uh, whenever they get into it, because water and carbon are big components to all of that. Because that was the other thing they were hoping to look for is see if they could find amino acids mm. on this asteroid. Because again, that's another big open question. How amino acids are are the building blocks of proteins, and um, and so there's a big question of how did you know how does li- how did life on Earth form? Right. We can only look back so far. We don't know how it began. And right. so this could give us some insight onto how one possible way, maybe with maybe not just water was seeded on Earth, but also some of these building blocks that were used to form amino acids and proteins. So li- the origin of life stuff, which could be yeah. super fascinating if they can get uh, if they can yield some of that data. So if what what if uh, what if the water situation was just taken care of by the happenstance of like I don't know a gigantic ice asteroid. From who okay. knows where? Usually comets. So you're thinking comets because those are huge balls of ice. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. So enough of that hits the Earth. That's a lot of water, though, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you? Yeah, fill yeah. Up? And, but certainly, it's going to take a lot of it, right? Because let's say you're you're talking about the the very early Earth. It's still very hot. Probably much of the 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 surface is still molten rock, right? Yeah. Um. And so 
if a, a bit even a big comet hits that and is a is mostly water ice let's say just hypothetically sure water um, ice as they say in uh, philadelphia yeah water ice, <laughs> water, water ice yeah, yeah. <laughs> um they're gonna all of that may evaporate and everything but but a lot of that is gonna just evaporate off and go out into space again um, oh i see what you're saying so you're still gonna yeah. need a lot of them because you're gonna need enough right for that too and that's why some people think that it's not likely that that happened there's other theories about the water actually being contained in the minerals and rocks of the earth and just slowly over time precipitated out slowly upward and everything so do you uh different theories slightly it's not it's actually connected uh, what i wanted to send you and i'll still send it but have you do you follow brian cox at all not the actor but the the astrophysicist guy um, I, I watch a lot of his stuff and read a lot of his stuff. Um, I don't follow him closely, though. No. Okay. Super interesting dude, obviously. Yeah. Very charismatic I, he's, as well. He's really great. I like him a lot. Yeah. Uh, he has, there's this chunk of audio I need to send you where someone asks him what his biggest fear is about uh, the universe. And his answer is both poignant, but just opened a whole bag of chips for me, like brain chips. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send. It's too hard to explain here, so I'm 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 pulling okay. a Johnson here a little bit. But I'll send you this audio or this video I found, and you can you can hear it. And we can just maybe have a little offline discussion of it because it really broke sure. my brain. It made me go, "Oh my gosh, he's right! Holy shit!" I'm like, anyway, so there's that's Works a his fun brain more than sent, sent, and sent. Yeah, sent, sent, and sent, which really broke my brain. <laughs> I'm just I just repaired all that. Now I got this. Yeah, new right. Break. Now it's new breakage. Yeah. Sucks, yeah, man. Yeah. Anyway, well, that's fascinating. Uh, yeah. More on that from your awesome podcast. Tell people where they can get it and, and, and why yeah, they should listen. we actually did talk a, a lot about this specific thing on um, just two episodes ago, and uh, Mora covered it and went into much more detail about asteroids and comets and, and, and this mission in particular. Um, that's on All Around Science is the podcast. And um, you can uh, we we talk all about science news and just other stuff going on in science. We just had a an interview with an anthrozoologist, um, who um, who taught us what anthrozoology even is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good place um, to start. I don't yeah. know what that even and, uh, is. Never heard of that. It's about it's about the interaction between uh, the study of the interaction between humans and and animals. Oh, um, okay, and stuff like that. So, All right, which we have Did a long you, history uh, with animals. Yeah, we love our animals. Where some of us uh, go as far as a furry lifestyle, and that's fine. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that at You're all. You're super into um, it. I get it. It's one one quick uh, kind of related science question: Did you get a chance to uh, get outside and watch the eclipse this weekend? It was too cloudy here. I oh couldn't. no! Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we got a decent shot at it here, and they did that whole reflective thing through trees where the. Where the light oh, sure. through the trees would cast little moons on the floor. Little ground. miniature. Oh yeah, uh, that's really crescents. cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love. Yeah, because I got to see that the when the full solar eclipse um, happened some year a few years ago. Oh. Uh, that that the center of that the center of totality, like smack dab in the center of totality, passed right over our house. So we oh, were able to wow, cool. see it without even having to go anywhere. It was amazing, and yeah, we got to see what you were talking about, Scott. Little those little, little basically it's like crescents little pinhole, all over the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all the pinhole cameras, basically. Yeah. The same effect. yeah, it was really yeah, it's, it's something to see. If you stopped off and had a something I never had before, a mochi donut. There's a new place in Denver that makes mochi donuts, and cool. uh, had some Vietnamese coffee and a mochi donut and sat there with my uh astro uh, astronomers uh, no it's the denver astronomy association glasses looking up at the yeah up at the eclipse wow that's cool that you yeah. you you're already better than a certain elected official we had a couple of years ago. <laughs> hey melania why'd you look up there yeah right sure <laughs> oh they said don't look at it and he immediately went immediately oh it. yeah right there right there yeah uh-huh yeah. weirdo <laughs> uh well bobby it's always a grand time hanging with you and uh, we look forward to this hap- when this happens every time. Uh, anything else you want to mention? Uh, nope. I just go all around science. All yeah. around science, you bastards. Go get it today. Bobby Frankenberger, everybody. Go check him out. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye now. Okay. What happened there? Oh, it worked. Okay. Uh, Brian, we, uh, we're near the end of the show here. Oh, look at this, Brian. You want to see some burgers? Oh, can you not hear me? Why? Oh, did I quit? Did I quit the call? <laughs> yes. Oh, weird. Usually, 
usually you catch it. And, uh, and so I, I was like, all right, he'll pick up on it. And then I see you still talking to me like, hmm, nope, can't hear you. That Look was, up there. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed. I don't know is. No, I'm glad you, you pointed because I, I, for, I thought for real I was all good. That was very strange. <laughs> um, I found something I want. I'm going to just share it with you real quick. This is, okay. uh, right. I'm going to buy this because I'm an idiot. <laughs> So I found this on Amazon. There's your link. Sure Chat, you, look you at know, this. Take a... Oh, geez, Louise. I'm buying these fake burgers. You get two of them. Uh, look at these things. Oh, hilarious. Look at that. Are they full size? Yeah, they're full size. These are meant for like kitchens and things where people are showing off whatever they make or whatever. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a real range of, of like realism versus cartoony looking fake food. I don't want any yeah. of the cartoony stuff. I want the realistic stuff. And I'm going to buy these burgers. These in photos, these look absolutely realistic, don't they? Which I mean, it crazy. might be this, you... the reviews are good. Well, there's only one rating, so yeah, the review is good. The review is good. <laughs> the review is five stars. So yes, I don't know exactly. Uh, um, yeah, make sure. I mean, you've got to have some fun with Van with this thing. Oh hell yeah, dude! That's half the half the good time to have, right? Is to yeah, fool little yeah. kids. Um, oh, let's look see. at all these uh, donuts and uh, cupcakes. Oh, they got all kinds of crap too, right? Fries. Yeah. Uh, there's a pea. that doesn't look like a hot, not real hot dog though. That's kind of boring. Let's see. No, but these donuts and cupcakes and muffins look pretty good. Yeah, I'm. I wonder if Etsy. Etsy probably has free delivery things. today. So for twenty three bucks, <laughs> I could have these sixteen piece fake food, realistic artificial toy donuts, cupcake, fake slice cake, artificial simulation, yeah. macaron, artificial food, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, yeah, how big are these things? Let's I know, see. Right, that's the thing. The fake can't... donuts measure five centimeters, two inches in diameter. So they're all they're also way miniaturized fake donuts, cakes, macarons. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Oh my gosh, I gotta do something with these. <laughs> I like this. The description: the fake donuts measure five centimeters, two inch in diameter. The artificial cupcakes are about five by six centimeters. The fake cake slice measures uh, seven centimeters, and the fake macaron is five centimeters. <laughs> Eye catching and can be noticed easily. <laughs> uh, Thank goodness a, you can notice them easily. That's how you know there's a dude in China working on the uh, the copy. That's how you that's know. That's right. Exactly. Uh, well, all right then. That was a good time right there. Let's uh, get out of here. Although we do have a quick thing. You know the Versalis, Versailles, Versilis, whatever Versailles, we are. Versailles, Versailles. Versailles versus Versailles. All that know. stuff. Well, we have some yeah. confirmation from some locals. I got 15 calls about this. I'm only playing one. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the one. Brian, this is Harold from Kentucky. You're actually right. It's Versailles, Kentucky. It's the county seat of Woodford County. Kentucky, where Woodford Reserve was made, which is north of that. Louisville is an interesting uh, concept. Where you are in greater Louisville, you may hear it pronounced Louisville, which is more the common way of saying it, or Louisville, or Louis. Eh, Louisville is not that common. Uh, but you can almost tell where somebody lives in the city by how they pronounce it. Anyway, enjoy the show, but I was just yelling at my phone a second ago, so I thought I would call. Thanks a lot. <laughs> That's I why know. I gave it to him because he apparently yelled at his call, his phone I like and that. I felt bad. So I was like, All Oh, right. well, plus I always like the calls. Yeah, Brian is right about that. I know, right? Right. Brian Wright are good calls. I, like those calls. I love yeah. them where, where our biases are confirmed. So thank you for that, everybody. So there we go. And yeah, you know, the the whole Louisville Louisville, because um, mm -hmm. what you you can't call the baseball bat. I don't think you could seriously call it a louisville slugger louisville. you have to say a louisville slugger louisville. right yeah right i didn't think of that you have to call that a louisville slugger you don't call it a louisville slugger yeah all right we also got some stuff from arkansas folks who are like uh hello we look like arkansas and we say arkansas for no reason yeah. and i'm yeah. like yeah you guys are part of the problem true, <laughs> true. <laughs> well done true. Yep. Uh, all right, that's it for that. Later today, so some good news, I guess. I don't know what this is, but um, <laughs> I've uh, I get a lot of a lot of different developers who send me um, review codes for brand new games, and they're like, "Hey, mm -hmm. you should play this for us." And do you want this? And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah sure." Yeah. And then I'll oftentimes play this stuff, and I'll talk about it on core, but they don't get a lot of exposure for it. So I'm going to start with a regular uh, Frog Pants play stream every Monday. And I'm doing it later in the day so that people who are working and stuff can can come watch. So starting today, nice. from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, mountain Time, 
uh, at frogpants.tv, I will start doing Frog Pants Plays again, and I'll be doing it every Monday uh, with, you know, holiday exceptions or whatever. Uh, so that's starting today, and uh, come around today at 5.30, or excuse me, at 6 p.m., and I will play cool. games. I don't know which ones I'm doing yet. i got a huge list backlog of these indies and stuff people send me, chore core games, all kinds of crap. Uh, I'll pick a couple of them. We'll spend a couple hours with it and spend some time with you folks. So if you want to come watch live and uh, check these games out, you can. That'll start today and happen every Monday. Frog Pants Plays, we call it, at frogpants.tv, 6 p.m., 8 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, right here. So come check it out. Cool. Very cool. Uh, you know, I'm, yeah. I might do, uh, before that, I might do some uh, assembly. The, the last Iron Man pieces to make this thing do the uh, superhero landing pose, basically. Nice. That's all you have left, so, eh? That's the only. That's all I have left. Yeah. So right now he just stands up. Right now he's standing up and waving, but I want to have. I really want to have him up on the shelf behind me. Yeah. And he's too tall to put upright. But if I have him doing the superhero landing pose, then I think he can fit up there. He might be too. too um, wide. You know that back leg bent might be too deep to fit on that bookcase. That looked really cool though. Sign me. Right sign now. me up for this inevitable future. It sounds great. I'll put him, I'll oh, put him right up there. Here. Yeah. Yeah. He'll work right there. They'll so totally show up there. Yep. What album sure. do we have out today? What's the album next to you? It's uh, Johnny Cash live at San Quentin. A used copy that I got that uh, is signed. By Johnny Cash? Um, no, by somebody named um, Melanie Lilly. Oh. She she signed it, which is really nice of her. I don't know. Weird. I don't think I don't think she was a resident of San Quentin. I think she was a the previous owner of this album that I got at a thrift store. <laughs> I love you. Got a signed album of... of... <laughs> Of Johnny Cash's. Like, you walked around, it was perfectly set up, too. Like, signed copy, ooh, by Johnny Cash? Nope, by the previous <laughs> owner of the album. <laughs> it's like getting a book where it's like, Dear Sally, we hope you enjoy the book. And it's like, look at this, autograph by Sally, an owner, previous owner of the book. Actually, funny you bring that up. So Chris Brown, massive fan of um, power pop like uh, The Kinks, Joe Jackson, uh, Nick Lowe, and I found in a used bookstore, um, God, I'm, I might get this wrong. I think it was Nick Lowe's autobiography. Mm. And um, uh, and it was I, I popped it open, I'm looking at it, and I open up the, the very first page, and it's been given as a gift already. Yeah. And uh, it said, um, Dear Tom, I hope you enjoy this. It, you know, I know you're a big fan of his music, and I know you really want to know the behind-the-scenes stories of all of his songs, and so I really hope you enjoy this, signed, um, Melissa. Mm. So I bought the book for Chris Brown, and then I wrote underneath that inscription, I said, Dear Chris Brown, I hope you like this book better than Tom did. <laughs> signed, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly that guy didn't like it. A long, he didn't enough, like it enough to keep it. No. Nope, he liked it enough to sell it the first chance he got to us, a second in Charles. So That's great. Done with that. That's a great yeah. regift. I love that. Yes. I mean, it's literally a real gift because you bought it, but you know, it's a real gift, oh, right? Exactly. But it's a, but you know, it, it worked perfectly as both a thing that I know he likes <laughs> and as a way to to have some snarky fun That's at Tom's fan. expense. Absolutely fantastic. I love that. Uh, all right, that's it for the show. We're done. I yeah. would like to tell people to go to patreon.com slash TMS. I'd like to tell you. No, I would like to tell you. <laughs> we want you to go there. Okay, we do. Uh, because it's a great month to get in. It's uh, the spookiest month of the year. So why not do a spooky thing like sign up for our Patreon for as low as a dollar a month, which will get you no commercials ever, pre-show content every day, couch parties on the weekend, art in the mail, and other great monthly benefits. Although the art in the mail one's a little higher than a dollar. But still, mm -hmm. for a monthly thing, we're so stupid here. Take advantage of us right now. Yeah. Patreon.com slash TMS. And now, a song prepared and, goal, and delivered. Way, oh, go ahead. What? Let's the see. goal, by the way, is still to have these um, morning stream magnets done before November. So oh, yeah. a bunch of these I just need to get with you and figure out how many I need to produce. Yeah. And, um, can and do. then we'll take it from there. 100% can do. Oh, another nice. I just got this. This just in. Uh-huh. Uh, I just got a note. We've been waiting in a gigantic queue production queue for Dungeon Murder's actual printing and production. Oh, wow. No kidding. And I just got okay. a note that said, we are officially in production as of Woo! right today. Today, That means they may start shipping this end of the week or next week. Oh, shipping 
out like, to everybody. Like or out, yeah, because we're to send out to we're everybody. basically prepped with everything else. All the extra shirts and the bonus stuff and all the extras are done and waiting. They're all staged. As soon as these start rolling in, which should be pretty quick. Last time I got cards within two days after they were in production. Wow. Okay. Um, those will start rolling in, and then right out the door is the goal. Nice. So I'm Just very in excited. time for your Thanksgiving celebrations. Yeah, very excited about that. All right, uh, that'll do it for today. We need to go have a song, though. Can you, can you All do right. that? Well, uh, J.K. Grammer wrote in. Our friend J.K. Grammer says, uh, Hey, Superior and Bruticus. She said, yes. Aww. I proposed to my girlfriend, Sarah, this past Friday, and she said, yes. We're planning on getting married in April in Vegas at TMS Vegas. I'm just kidding. In March. <laughs> and we can't wait. We love that we can share this special time with you guys and all the Tadpool. Could the ultimate orange ex-prez impressionist Brian please play us a cover of our song? <laughs> Cheesy, but we like some cheese. Uh, Forever Young by Alphaville. That's a great song. Yeah, great song. Love that song. Uh, yeah, Such a good one. <laughs> you know, named after a German movie. Did you know that? A lot of people, because it's uh, got subtitles. I don't like the subtitles. I can't read them. I can't, I can't keep up with the words as they move on the screen. It's really anyway. getting better. The long, It's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know people hate uh, it, but it's getting better. It's really good. And yes. I just put up some uh, photos, by the way. That's that's her. That's the ring. That's her mascara running. Cause <laughs> that's she, her mascara uh, running. I love that photo. So sweet. Yeah, it's very sweet. Happy for you guys. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, he also he continues, we love you guys and everyone in our wonderful community of frog pants. We're sure we're going to need a lot of rice oh, on our big day. Shit. Hold on. I'm not prepared here. Rice. Can't not have this for the mer- happy couple. Dump. The- nope. That's the wrong guy. Hold on. Here it is. Then you can eat rice. Got it. Nailed it. <laughs> Tim, Tim Watson, I have message redacted, but I saw briefly it said something about Forever Young. You probably thought, it's by Bob Dylan, not by Alphaville. I'm guessing that's what you put in and changed, uh, Tim Watson. Yeah, probably. Uh, live chat. Live chat's great. I can still see message redacted. Anyway, uh, love you all. Signed, James and Sarah. All right, let's get to this. Uh, this is uh, Forever Young. Yeah, we've had a lot of people do Forever Young um, over the years, and and you know, like Tim Watson was going to tell me, it's it, there are many songs called Forever Young. This is the one by Alphaville. However, this is the one covered by a little band that you might hear when you're. Uh, uh, oh, it's a French movie, not a not a German movie. Okay. Oh. Um, the German movie invaded the French movie and then made it a, a German movie. That's, <laughs> That's right. Okay, yeah. French movie. Anyway, what what does Trump know? He's dumb. Uh, you know. <laughs> Well, I knew that it was a French movie, but that was my Trump person. Yeah, you were doing, you were in character. Was, it's fine. I was in character. I'm very method. Yeah. Uh, right. And that's why I thought, yeah, Bombets, I, I thought that it was a German movie because Alphaville, the band, is German. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the band that's covering them, they're, they're a perfect band to listen to if you're on a train with Rebecca de Mornay. Yes, Tangerine Dream here covering Alphaville's Forever Young from their 2012 album, so creatively titled Undercover. Here's Tangerine Dream. See you guys tomorrow. Get more at frogpants.com. And that's a story, Marshall. Gee, that is a story. It sure is. Gee. <laughs> Gee. Gee, it sure is a um, story. Sorry. Yeah, yes. J.K. Grammer. The version by Rod Stewart is a cover of the... Um, oh, that's its own. That's not even the Bob Dylan song. That's a third song called um, uh, Forever Young. Is it? Forever young. Yeah. I want to be. That's different. Yeah. 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 That's the that's the Rod Stewart one. I can only the... think of Forever Young. May you always be as handy and as sound as you do. May you stay forever, <laughs> forever young. young. Yeah. Yep. How's he doing? Anyone checked in on him? Is he all right, mm, Bob Dylan? We shouldn't mention him. Oh, I know. I'm probably this is probably bad. Yeah. Just Good check. thing we didn't mention Suzanne Summers, or we'd have a thousand emails. Oh from people. my gosh, poor Suzanne Summers. Yeah, that was sad. She wasn't that old. Really sad. She wasn't. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Here we go. He is eighty-two. Mm. Just just younger than my mother, and uh, seems to be doing all right. Yeah, he's he's okay. Good. Okay. Bob yeah. Dylan's okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, Bob Dylan's all right. You guys, we checked in. He's fine. Phew. Watch him die in a week, and we'll all be like, oh, shit. 
<laughs> oh, no, God. I don't want that to happen. But you I know. don't know. Yeah, of course, neither of us want that to happen. Uh, course, everybody out there listening live, go to frogpants.showbot.tv. Do it right now and uh, submit your stuff and vote if you haven't already. Um, we're going to pick some of our favorites here, like reduced libido yeah. eulogy is a pretty strong one. I love Ooh, it. Porkish. Lots, of, lots of votes today. You see all this? Yeah, you guys did great with the votes. Look at that. Tens yeah. and twelves and fifteens. Yeah, that's a type. Funeral potatoes. <laughs> Even though that was the beginning of a section. That's true. I think we just have to make sure we say it like uh, like uh, Samwise. Yeah. Potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> uh, mineral balance breakfast with Bobby. That sounds good. good. What's a flocktive? <laughs> <laughs> Crumplage in the bumperage. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the euphemism for sex. You did call it yeah, crumplage. Yeah, me, me and the wife are going to get a little crumplage in the bumpridge. In the bumpridge. Leave us alone. Let's see. Cold hands down the pants. That's a Brian Dunawayism for you. That's not bad. What? Shebang she- restart. Did you play shebangs while... Uh, I don't think so. Oh, just restarting the whole shebang is what... Uh, oh, because you that's pre-show, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uncheck. Uncheck. Uh, ah, dear PW. Phone sacks. I like that. Phone sacks. Good. Even that though that was pre-show too, but that's all right. Oh, that might be a good title anyway. It's short and easy. Mm-hmm. We'll, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> What's the beware. number before 12? <laughs> <laughs> beware crab boiled corn on the cob. It's I true. like that. That's just good advice, man. It really is. They have an all-you-can-eat for fifty nine ninety five, and you can just keep getting more and more boiled seafood. That's pretty good. It is pretty good. My next door neighbor says, oh, they're going to lose some money on me. <laughs> <laughs> going to go in there and pull a Sizzler's you all-you-can-eat shrimp. You have a limit of four uh, Dungeness Crab Clusters. It's like, that's all right. Yeah. Four Dungeness Crab Clusters is... <laughs> that's a lot of crab. Two crabs. Yeah, basically. that's that's a whole ep- episode of The Most Dangerous Catch. you got to be careful that's on the right, team. exactly. Uh, I want to buy the fake TVs. That's good. I like that one a lot. They call it an Isle Royale with cheese. That's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> the Havening. The Havening. <laughs> <laughs> that might be lead lead title there. That like one, that actually, one. I do like that. Yeah, The Havening. That's pretty good. Uh, I don't even know who this is. Cot, cot, oh, Katrina's, Katrina's Carousel. Carol's, Carousel. Yeah. Is that Katrina? Just our normal Katrina? That's, that's our normal... Um, not. Uh, she goes by Katrina's Carousel, but her real name is... Oh my God, I'm blanking on because I think of you as Katrina's Carousel. Lives in in Pahrump, outside of Vegas. Oh, it is um, Katrina. She won. It's not Katrina. It's um. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with us? I know. Begins with a K. Oh my God, help us out here. Get put us out of our misery because we're both dumbasses. Yeah, it's it's not Caitlin. It's not Chris. Not Christy. Katie. Katie. Jesus. Talmo. Katie shit. Talmo. Yes. All right. We should our when our signed uh first year of taskmaster stuff that's right that's For, absolutely forgive right. us katie please yeah, please forgive us for all our sins exactly um, um what is this that is best, or a scamp chauvinist pig. yeah i was just gonna ask <laughs> what is that i don't know what that is that was me talking about david addison from moonlighting also pre-show but still oh fun. still worth it yeah it's fine yeah we need one more let's see how about my punishment is that i'll go to pahrump <laughs> next time i'm in uh, vegas <laughs> Um, if I play Mario, I'm cheating on Zelda. That's a good one. When <laughs> That's great. That's great. How come that didn't get more votes? I don't know. That's an unfortunate thing. We're putting it in. All right. Title. I think that uh, The Havening is the winner. I like The Havening, yeah. Good job, Katrina, a.k.a. Katie Talmo. I don't know why we couldn't remember your name. That was dumb. Yeah. Sometimes we get so caught up like with the, the avatar names or the, the screen names. We, like, we, we show up at a thing. And oh, you're uh, you're squishy. Oh yeah, okay, squishy. Yeah, I know you. And you know, I do this do every time. time. Yeah, every time we go, and I'm like, I have to put face to to name. It's it's really hard. Yeah, it's hard because we don't. I have a different picture of you with your usernames than I do of you in person. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. no way around it. Ooh, Jeannie Sara says Taskmaster launched their own streaming service. If you're looking to watch it all, the only version not currently on there is New Zealand but it's coming. If they're as long as they're not taking it off of YouTube, their own that service their like own just own streaming service? Yeah, what else do they do besides their the one show? There must be more. They have they have different shows in different countries. Oh, wild. They had one in America that was shit. It was on uh 
It was on Comedy Central, and um, they lost the the charm. Why are we so bad at that? I we don't know. we once in a while we get it right with like I don't know. U.S. Office got their crap together after the first season sometimes. Yeah. But most of the time we're not good when we take your foreign thing and do it here. Oh, look at this! Five ninety nine a month after a seven day free trial. Ah, You're tempted. I like this. I smell temptation with Brian. Six bucks a month? I'm kind of fine with that. It's not bad. It's cheaper yeah. than a... Over, over going through the YouTube? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if the YouTube's Superman. got... Taskmaster Supermax. <laughs> is that what it's called? No, what is it called? Yeah. It's called Taskmaster Supermax it is? Plus. Yes. Supermax Plus dot VHX dot TV. <laughs> that, is that real? Yeah, that's real. That seems borked. That's crazy. What a <laughs> like just the fact that they're like capitalizing on everything being plus or max or whatever. Yeah, that's we that's crazy to me. But I guess yeah, things exist nice. in a world. Uh all right. We are ready to read. Oh, we yeah, didn't do I'll your you, selfie. I'll give, you a I'll give you a selfie in a minute. Yeah, you're fine. We'll do um, the read first. Here comes read, everyone. You want to fix that what's a fluctive? Oh yeah, where is that? Um Oh, what happened there? That was it's so weird. It's the apostrophes, just freak the freak. Oh, wasn't that another one we were going to add something to? Oh, um, yes. Uh, funeral potatoes. We got to say it like, put, that's me, so I'll remember to okay. say potatoes. Like, yeah, as long as you remember, we're good. I'll remember. Bye, Mimi. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. TMS is brought to you daily by the support of our patrons at patreon.com slash TMS, like Michael Simmons, Primitive B, and Ray Feeney. Coming up on TMS, reduced libido eulogy. Porkish. Funeral potatoes. That's a typo. What's a flocktive? Crumplage in the bumperage. Phone sacks. Cold hands down the pants. What's the number before 12? <laughs> Beware crab boiled corn on the cob. Ew. They call it an Isle Royale with cheese. Double ooh. I want to buy the fake TVs. Stamp chauvinist pig. If I play Mario, am I cheating on Zelda? Mineral Balance Breakfast with Bobby and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. Perfection in a can. Like that. Like that. Is Beat what that, that you pieces of shit. Let's see Adam Carolla do better. <laughs> yeah, he's probably fine. That guy, I don't Whatever. know. I don't know what he does. Chat room, we're going to uh, exit and go into a production meeting gonna be a short one because nothing today was great um I, <laughs> yeah we we know we know about all the technical difficulties because they all happened before the show yeah they were pre-show so we don't really have to think about it too much uh but anyway have a great rest of you